I want it my way. Uranus, opposite Uranus, with my new friend, Nicole. How's it going out there, Internet? <laughs> hey, we're talking about Uranus conjunct Jupiter and Taurus. And what better person to talk about Uranus conjunct Jupiter with Taurus, except for someone with Uranus in Scorpio conjunct Scorpio moon? Uh-oh, I've already outed her, and it's like two minutes into the video. <laughs> How's it going, That's Nicole? okay. It's great. Thanks, Ralph. I'm so excited to <laughs> talk about this topic. <laughs> so, Uranus, Taurus. For all of us Taurus planets. It's on your, it's uh, in between your sun and Mars. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be right on my Venus mm -hmm. uh, North Node. Yes. There's that. And then uh, all you Uranus and Scorpio get the opposition. And then also the Uranus, uh, the Aquarius Leo nodes doing a little square dance with the Pluto coming up. So what's your thoughts? It's a fixed party. <laughs> um, I've been thinking so much about just Uranus and Taurus in general. And this new 14 year cycle that's coming up with that Jupiter here and really how of all of us been changing what's valuable. That's that. For me, that big Taurus, like asking that question, is this worth it? Right? What's worth yeah, it? Our I like that way of that. looking at it. Yeah. Right? What do we give? Because Taurus to me is like that, our inborn resources. Like what do we come in with that's valuable? And what are we learning that's valuable? How are we assessing that? And Jupiter there, like changing our beliefs around that. Uranus making us really have to shake the foundation. And I don't know about you, but I don't like my foundation shook all the time. <laughs> but Change, it's been it, whether I like it or not. Change? Yeah. <laughs> not so much. None of the fixed signs, right? Unless we get to pick. So I don't even like if I get to pick. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. 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 So uh it's interesting when you say that one of the things that I've been like trying to digest is having a calming effect is something of value. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, uh, do you see that in yourself and do you find it of value? Yes. I didn't that, used to. I'd so say. How, with how do you, how do you uh, valuetize that? <laughs> I'd say it. I know. Right. What is that? Um, I mean, I think that's something I've really been learning. I'll throw in a little sage as we talk. <laughs> Perfect. Um, particularly the last few years, because having that cancer rising, Scorpio moon, you know, really feeling identified with with that Scorpio and and the intensity and needing all that and now kind of moving towards I actually like um for me it's simplicity in certain ways. And it's a lot of learning to say no that's something i've had to learn with that taurus it's like getting pushed around until i'm like oh no i'm not doing that that's not worth my time to engage in xyz or this is not worth my you know my resources my blood sweat tears that's been a big one for me especially with that mars as you mentioned you know if i'm really going to go there is this valuable and what does that look like? And kind of changing how how I view that. I don't know about you. What do you think? Well, it's interesting for me because I, um, like often it's so hard to see yourself because you, you're in it, you know? So it's like other people have this, but it's like having that Taurus Scorpio dance, which both of us have, but there's like, because it's like a lot of people can be like super intense Scorpio or super calm Taurus, 
but not very many people can kind of bring them both together because it's like I can have the scorpionic like deep dive, but then bring that Taurus calming. Like, because I would imagine that um, there's not many places people don't feel comfortable going with you. You know, yeah. and it's like, and and that was one of the things for me to just kind of like, oh, okay, how do I, how do I value that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and still to this day, I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, when you brought that up, one of the things I thought of was that you have Neptune in Scorpio. Yes. Yeah. So depth without boundaries. Boundaries? What are boundaries? <laughs> Yeah. I have exactly. Saturn what and Pisces that? too. What so, is that? Just like, yeah, right. so they're all dissolved. <laughs> um, I'm becoming, I know for myself, more comfortable with, what's the word I want to use? Maybe disappointing other people and being okay with that. Um, you know, that, that Scorpio relational needs to go deep. But then I ask my, the Taurus comes in and says, do we? Do we need to go this deep? Does that disturb peace? And yeah, then but, but, but I want to I want to come back because I want to go back straight yeah. into Jupiter and Taurus. Yeah. Because so why do you need to disappoint people? It's a trick Gemini question, too, by the way, just in <laughs> case you thought I wasn't playing unfair. <laughs> right. Because here's what I'd like to suggest, Taurus, yeah. Jupiter. Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus. Because disappointing someone basically it's like throwing a pebble in the Taurus pond. Versus you have to let them into your sphere for them to be disappointed. Why don't it's like why don't you like at the at the corner you know of the street it's like yeah don't even turn left here keep going next street <laughs> yeah is that to me see to me that's the the jupiter like what's truly possible uranus what's truly possible in taurus what's really like because the minute you disappoint someone you know it's like all over with in my opinion mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I've been looking at it, I guess, from the opposite lens because of living so much of my life in the sphere of if I disappoint, there's something that I've failed at. And so now I look at it at the opposite side of, well, that's okay if what their expectations were and my expectations are aren't on the same street that we have to do some different directions and that that's okay. And that might be the thing that's a value in my beliefs or their beliefs or whatever. Cause the other piece with Jupiter for me, I've really been looking at. So if at, you just, if you disappoint someone, you've done something wrong. Did, yes. I, did I hear that? Yes. Yeah. That's an interesting one. I know that one very well. It's an interesting one that gets, for me, wrapped up in self-value. Now, I'm not being valued by the other person. Because did you, did you disappoint them or did they disappoint themselves? That's a really great question that I don't know that I've ever considered. Yeah, because so see, to me, part of, to, part of me with the Jupiter Taurus, mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep saying Jupiter Taurus when I really want to say Jupiter Uranus and Taurus. In the Jupiter Uranus and Taurus is like it's like raising the octaves of, of what's really, you know, because the the Aquarian is kind of like wants to be the outsider, wants and, and it's like from an astrological perspective, Aquarius has been kind of like. 
I'm the rebel, I'm the rebel, I'm the outsider, I'm the rebel. And it's like, there's a lot of truth in that. But the problem with that is, is that you're, you're, you're kind of setting yourself up to be shot at, you know, versus it's like, I am not the outsider. I keep what's outside out like unaware of me so that I can then come into this Torian tribe where I, I only get love. Because when I'm only getting love, I'm not getting if no one gets me, no, I'm not disappointing or any of that because that's going to... That's going to give me that Taurus, Taurus calm, you know, because the minute someone is upset with you, the pawns disturb, you know. Yeah. And, and, and to me, this is kind of like that, that opposition and also the Pluto coming in as Aquarius coming in, kind of interacting with this, because one of the things that really changed my life is once I, once I kind of stepped away from all the darts that were being shot at me. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's nice over here. And then you can kind of step back into it. And then, and it's like, and it's funny because for me, I don't know, how, I, I do know how I pull it off, but I don't know how I pull off that. For the most part, I don't deal with that on YouTube. It's like only people who, who want to, you know, love what I do, want to, it's like, and it's a good thing because otherwise it's like well, you'll see my channel just disappear. It's like, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> like, you know, and uh yeah, it's that level of like how how Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus can we get? Hmm. So what's your thoughts? I like all of what you said. I'm I'm digesting all of what you've said. The other thing I think about that I maybe in an antithesis, but hopefully in a complementary way here as well is the fixed signs all being uh, the apex of their season, right? They're, they're sustaining it. They're bringing, um, you know, Taurus is bringing the blossoms to fullness and Leo is, is the, the dog days of summer, right? It's just the best of summer and we can keep, you know, going through that and really thinking about that and also thinking about bringing things to their height. What does that mean? And how Jupiter also wants to elevate wants to exaggerate it wants to be this big you know it's the biggest planet that we know of right now um wow. in our galaxy you know how it has all this fullness kind of coming together and what what can we bring it's through that the second biggest planet by the way what's the biggest? oh no that's wrong you're right because the sun is a star i'm sorry oh. <laughs> you're correct <laughs> you're correct but it, <laughs> it's interesting when I think of those two things coming together, you know, like you talked about the, often we think of Aquarius as the rebel and yes. And I also look at it as Aquarius as being the elite because it's the apex as well. The, the Aquarius is the, I didn't hear that last thing. Uh, being elite. Elite. So being oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The apex of knowledge or the apex of technology or the apex of being the outsider. You know, whatever it is, bringing that to the top, if you would, of the pyramid, and then you turn that pyramid over again. And that's what you're supposed to share out in the collective is doing the thing to the best it can possibly be done or the, the fullness it can be done. And that's what gets shared back out. And the cycle keeps feeding almost like the DNA strand, right? How it um, flows, yeah, it brings totally. the top, split it back out. So I've been thinking about how that's going to affect where we are and what we're doing um again coming up for these next 14 years well you when but one thing that i've been like tripping on really hard on this too is that um if you think about aquarius being mm -hmm. the outsider when those words were first spoken 
Okay. Back when you were in this little village and there was nothing around because one of the things that I'm getting with Pluto going into Aquarius, it's like, it's like everything we thought used to work isn't going to work anymore. You know, it's like Saturn and hard work. It's like, yeah, that got us to this point, but it's like, what's Saturn going to do when we have robots to do everything? You know, yeah. it's like, you know, and so it's like back when Aquarius is like the outsider, it's like we didn't have the internet. We didn't have the ability to reach in and connect and to, and, 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 and so I feel like one of the things that this Jupiter and, and Uranus and Taurus, especially aspecting you, the Scorpio, because one of the things for me, Scorpio is this, is this realization of that you feel everything, you know, it's like every little, someone doesn't like you from a Scorpio perspective, you feel like you feel that. Yeah. Yeah, the Scorpio like, antenna, it's very finely tuned and yeah. it has a broad reach. I would I would think for you has a super broad reach. Well, and you don't feel like that's the case for you? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. That's uh, because I have that moon there or yeah. it's just in, inherent with Scorpio. But yeah, it's... um. It's intense to have that experience of other people's, like picking up on other people's stuff all of the time. Yeah, so to me, Scorpio is, is this awareness that, that we're all connected, you know? And so I feel like one of the big things that's kind of the transits are trying to get us, I, in my opinion, this is what Pluto and Aquarius is all about. It's like, I think by the time Pluto gets out of Aquarius into Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, you have to be aware of, of the psychic connection, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, that's kind of like where I'm wondering, it's like, is it time to like update the language around Aquarius? I, I feel like, yes, because it seems like it belongs to another time. Yeah. I feel like there, there's many things in astrology that feel like they belong to another time. I, I think mean, most of astrology, in my opinion, I'm noticing for myself, it's like really kind of just like wanting to kind of push back on all the old definitions of of everything you know yeah it's like i mean because if you really if you really step back and you think about the fact that astrologers all have big egos and i mean i i because where i live i have the beautiful night sky so if you guys come out to astro bash it's going to be fabulous but um so look up at the sky and point to me that's like point to the bad Point to the difficult, point to the, you know, the oppressive, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm just like, yeah, you know, versus it's like, then down, come down to earth and look at the ego, look at society. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, so it's like Saturn is, you know, oppressive. It's just like, oh, okay. Pluto's bad. You know, Uranus is like, oh my God, you know. It's like, yeah, let's, uh, what, what if we had another way of looking at it? Yeah. So you've I been agree. sitting with Uranus opposite Uranus and Scorpio. What's your, uh, what's your, what's your thoughts on? It's an interesting thing to try and put it to words while you're experiencing it. Yeah. You know, because it's one of those things where. I feel like you can intellectualize like, oh, Uranus, opposite Uranus is going to be this, this, and this because the tradition says so, or because the planets fit these boxes or what have you. 
But when you actually get there and you live in it, especially with Taurus, right, that lived experience, the senses, the sensualness of it. And then that. Well, especially with that North Node in Leo, the couple that would set like 18 months of you folks out there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been. um, It feels almost like being all the old paradigms are, 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 you know, being pulled apart and it's like, well, what's the new? What does it feel like to experience what Scorpio is bringing that depth, that, um, you know, that journey almost of like the Inanna, like going through the underworld. What is it like to really embody that in a new way that isn't, what's the word I'm looking for? Isn't um, like restrictive and um, like the chains don't have to be on. It's like, we can take that off. What does that actually look like, feel like, experience like, smell like, taste like, um, feel like? Yeah. And being in the middle of it is, it's like, you know, writing the story, but not really seeing how it all comes together yet, for me anyway, in those early stages. Yeah, and it's like, it's interesting because it's like that Uranus in Scorpio, it's a natal placement of like, okay, so Scorpio is this, is a bunch of different things but it's like the the connectiveness it's like what makes people uncomfortable it's like all the the truth the de- the depth of truth but there's so many different layers of scorpio truth you know so many because it's like a lot of times people will be like this is the truth this is the truth and it's just like yeah that's the truth but here's another truth you speaking the truth is like shooting yourself in the head with a gun, <laughs> you know? It's like, it's like, oh, okay, wait a minute. It's like, do I have to throw the messenger under the bus? It's like, is it my duty to harm myself to speak my Scorpio truth? And and that's that's a that's been an interesting one to dance with myself, you know. And then it's like that opposition is Uranus in uh, in Taurus, you know. And, and uh, how often does Jupiter? What is that like? Every uh, Jupiter hits Uranus. What every uh, twelve about years? About fourteen or so? years. 14 yeah, about years. fourteen. So the next time, last time they hit was around 2010 and it was in Aries and then it retrograded into Pisces. So we had okay. that, that we've been bringing forward. Um, and that was about the time when YouTube really started taking off, right. Yeah. And influencers and the, the yeah. going out and being in that also Piscean, like not tangible way. Right. Um, kind of that glamor way, the film and all that. So I'm I'm so curious to see what I mean. Taurus needs tangibility, wouldn't you say? Like it needs yeah. to needs comfort, needs mm-hmm. stability, needs. So how's your experience with being on YouTube? It's been pretty positive overall. I'd have to say um, I didn't do it for years and years and years because I was afraid of it. I didn't want to deal with the, you know, I guess the mob coming from my head. <laughs> Yeah. If I said did something that offended who or wasn't popular for sure, who or are people whatever. nice to you? are people nice to you in the comments? I would say overall, yes, yeah. yes, it's been overall a great experience. Um, I've had you know a couple people that are have their viewpoint that's anti astrology because of you know inquisitional type of lineage. Um, Where do you find those people? They find me. <laughs> they leave me, you know, mm. they leave me comments letting me know that astrology is evil. Um, which is fine. That's their opinion. Um and then other than that, I def- definitely ruffled but, some. But I, I I got a question for you. It's like mm. um Well, I'm just kind of like, one of the things that 
has helped me out a lot was realizing how much control over that I have. You know, it's like when I started to step into how much control I had over that, you know, rather than like looking at it from the perspective of it happening to me, it's like more me like magnetizing that in, you know, so it's just kind of like, no. Yeah. You know, um, I noticed that big time in readings for me. It's like, I, it's like I had like a screaming match with the universe. It's just like, yeah. Oh wow! It's like, no, zero. We're not no, no. If they're not ready to have a reading with me, it's like no. Mm -hmm. And ever then, since then, I I stopped getting people that were like, yeah, because I I'm I'm really phenomenal at what I do, but I'm also kind of terrible at not doing what I do. <laughs> so it's like you're either ready for a reading with me or you're not. And so yeah. it's been. So it's like, I, I would suggest that uh, you might dance with that one. You yeah. Know? It's like setting that hard limit on with the universe. It's just like, no. It's like, yeah. pe those people don't need to see my videos. Yeah. Um, I was grateful for the experience because facing it, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like, oh okay hmm. you know i got mad about it for a minute and i thought why am i being mad so it actually you, was great you, for me to release did you it. delete the comment or a couple of them yeah i was like you know what just because uh, i thought maybe not but i thought you know i just don't want the residue of it there so yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that one i'm just going to be my own bouncer and say you know you don't go past the velvet rope you acted like a jerk you're out yeah yeah and no, i like kind that of go there with it but overall it's been really um really great and people have really responded to my approach to pluto which you and i share some things in common about pluto can be your friend i love how you say that because it's true once you understand pluto is your friend what's going on <laughs> oh 100 percent. but if you it's not can that, it is your yeah. friend yeah yes absolutely but you know the people that are just um, set oh, yeah. on Pluto's gonna, you know, bring death and destruction and chaos and rip your life apart. It's like, well, enjoy that. Enjoy the next 20 years then <laughs> and beyond, you know, because not every day does something catastrophically horrible come in, even though maybe we're conditioned to believe that that's true through other means, but that's not true. Well, it's and also the holding on. It's, it's like, it's like if you hold on to these personas, you know. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. But I've overall, the feedback I get is people feel so much more uh, refreshed by having a different perspective. So they don't have to, like, for me, I don't appreciate when astrologers terrorize people, you know, no, with all yeah. this bad, you know, and, and so many things that you read, particularly about outer planets or, or Mars, you know, they're, they're so skewed toward what I, what I also find is that one of the things that gets me is that, is that to me it's like the chart is to help you understand the person yes and, and so it's like if you don't look at the person you know it's like it's like you're missing it you know, and it's just like so often people will be like, oh, yeah, I have Uranus is another common one. I have a, a uh, or Aquarius. I have Aquarius rise. I'm not supposed to, you know, get along. I'm like. Says who? Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> like, uh, maybe it's you're supposed to get along with the, you know, mm -hmm. the right people. I remember I was at this uh, psychic fair in this little she was probably like 10 years old. She's like, I have, to I'm Taurus, I'm stubborn. And I'm like, it's like, oh my God. I'm like, so are you stubborn or are you just uh, determined? It's like, oh no, I'm determined. Yeah, I thought so. It didn't take me like two seconds. <laughs> You're not. And it was just like watching this like 10 year old, like gonna 
cruise through the world this you know it's like yeah you're not stubborn honey <laughs> it's like determined you know yeah. and stubborn is the way people say and that's to me like that whole audience you know because to me yeah. it's like it's like when you realize that you can hang out in your particular bubble of an audience the people who can get you that can get you that scorpio um uh the oneness of scorpio but without the without the turmoil you know mm -hmm. which is then the taurus you know which is then yeah. like that high level your uranian kind of connection mm -hmm. so yeah i love that i yeah uranus is such an interesting planet because again i i feel like it's one of the favorites to hate <laughs> You know, Pluto is awful. Uh, Uranus is awful. Saturn's awful. Mars is awful. And it's like, who decided that? Perhaps for events, maybe. I wonder more if it has to do with the history of not wanting people to, in a sense, um, have connection directly to whatever source is animating all of us. And having that personal empowerment that you can have when you really, truly understand yourself and other people. But if you remove that, and now you have to be subjugated to something else, someone else, some organization, whatever it is, you lose so much of the beauty of what's coming through these, the cosmic language, like the language got um, edited down to just things that were the worst versions of themselves in some sense. I yeah, think. no, I agree with that. Because to me, one of the things that I've been like dancing with on this is that, and this is a little counterintuitive, but it's like being not understood. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's it's the safer of the two rebels. Because it's like to be not understood means you're kind of like safe. No one can, you know, but it's like to actually truly be understood. That's where you're vulnerable. <laughs> that's where it's like, because then it's like someone can actually get in, you know, and it's like, because a lot of people don't realize it's like that Scorpio is like, that's where the true vulnerable is. Like if someone can really get in and see you, it's like, that's, who can truly hurt you, you know? And, yeah. and so I think that it's like being that rebel is like, it, it's like a, a protection, you know, versus it's like, oh, wait a minute, yeah. you know, I can really dive in. And then the other aspect too is like, when you're around people that actually get you, it's like you, you're forced to go even deeper. You know, it's like, oh, I love that. It's like, oh, I mean, I don't have to convince you. <laughs> that means I have to like, like. Yeah, or you didn't turn me away either. Yeah. <laughs> Back yeah. to the outside where it was safe. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm in the group. Now what? <laughs> yeah, it's such a great point. So. interacting with those notes. Adjustments. I feel like it's bringing things up for us to take a look at so that we can hopefully do it better so that we can take a look at, like you were saying, those vulnerabilities of what does it feel like to sit in the circle, to be really seen, because Leo wants to be seen. Yeah. And Leo's the sun. And I I I don't I don't know. I don't buy into the whole Aquarius doesn't want to be seen thing. Because not wanting to be seen is wanting to be seen just for not being yeah. seen. So therefore we go back to the beginning, right? That whole Uranian revolution, 360 degrees eventually comes back to zero. Right. You end up at that same point. 
one of the things that the, I've been tripping out about Leo is it's like it's it's not only wanting to be seen, but it's like what someone sees in you, you can't get there by yourself. And this is like because I don't have anything in Leo in my chart, but I everything's progressed in Leo. So my son and Mercury are up in Leo in the eleventh house. And um, it was really interesting for me because my wisdom came from other people saying, it's like, wow, that was profound. I'm like, who are you listening to? You know, and so the thing about Leo is it's like, if you're in front of the right people, they're going to point to parts of you that you can't see. You know, and that's the, the other thing. It's like, when you really think about it, it's like, we can't see ourselves. Literally, it's like, we can't, you know? And, and and then furthermore, it's like, depending on who is the person reflecting, it's going to show, you know, all sorts of different stuff. Like back to that story of the, being intense or that little girl being stubborn, you know, it's like, if that's the mirror or if that's the reflection, then then that's who you think you are. And, and to me, the, the Aquarius wound is all about being seen by the wrong people, you know? And then I think that's part of where that higher octave or the, it's kind of like, if you're seen by the wrong people and you end up looking for a new body as in dying, which was history's littered with that, yeah. you know, a great achievement is seen by the wrong people, but not being killed or being an outsider, you know, like, hey, that's way better, <laughs> you know, yes. but it's still kind of like, you know, there's a, there's a whole nother realm, you know, like what if, what if there was people who could actually get you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and also it's like, if you look at history, it's like, it's really a very small window of time that we've all been able to find each other. You know, yeah. it's like a really, really a small window of actual time in history, you know? And, yeah. I, and I think that that's going to play a big part into you know, finding the people can actually get you that can actually mirror back to you that can actually take us all deeper into normalizing, you know, and I think that on some levels, the people who are on the right dance are the ones that are going to survive, you know, other I agree. people are just going to like go insane and kind of take a take the easy way off the rock so to speak yeah i agree i feel like i feel almost like um and i've talked to a number of people also that have a lot of aquarius or things like that and and feeling almost like it's like coming online in a sense like this is the time you were meant to be plugged into so that you could boot up the system or reboot it in some way. It feels like this interesting kind of yeah. resonance in a way that I know I've never felt. And when I talk to other people who either were born in my generation or again, have like a lot of um, strong Uranian energy or strong Aquarian energy, they're saying the same thing. They're like, I finally feel like I'm fitting more into the frequency yeah. compared to where we've been even though you know if you look at one one side right of the illusion everything crumbling falling apart going into chaos losing its mind all of the all of this because that's all happening yes it is <laughs> we're also least, experiencing yeah. that but on the other side i mean i don't know about you but i'm like i feel this huge exhale at the same time that kind of dissonance um is very real for me in a lived way, but I don't feel, um, I mean, it's come, come back up kind of that, like, you know, who's going to be brave enough to tell the emperor they have no clothes. <laughs> That's fun. 
Um, but I almost feel like, and I don't want to be cavalier here, but I, almost like it's safer now in some way, even though we have the modern day witch trials and everything else going on. And there is this like link up of time where it's like, no, you need to do that. No, this is needed now to, to really tap into your in a bigger way, in an embodied way through that Taurus, bringing the Jupiter along with it to really open that up and carry that forward for 14 years. And something, I don't know how you've thought about this, but something I think about often is people expect this huge technological revolution that we're going to be in whatever, you know, kind of like the Jetsons and beyond and whatever. I'm wondering if the revolution will be the opposite. Will we move away from some of these things and go back to more tangibility or who knows? I mean, there could be a solar flare or an EMP or something that knocks the whole grid out. And then, and then we're back to analog, right? Which luckily for you and for me, we know how to do that. Um, so we'd be all right. But sometimes I think about that, like, well, what if that's the revolution? Because you're- yeah, I, 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 actually, I actually have a sneaking suspicion that AI is going to force this all offline. Mm-hmm. Because Same. it's gonna just get so, so crazy, and, and and um, I think part of what's going on now is is that the noisy, the minority that that are the noisy are trying to voice for the majority, yeah. and I also because it's like. If you think about generations, Pluto cycle generations, um, it's like the, the the Pluto and Libra, Pluto and Scorpio, it's kind of, they're kind of reaching that peak uh, uh, of their, their power, so to speak. They're kind of being unlocked, you know. The Libra yeah. was unlocked with all that Pluto and, and uh, in uh, Capricorn, um, you know, and, and, and it's like, you ever feel like this activation, like you're like a little sleeper cell and you got called up and activated? Yeah. I, 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 I know that for myself because being of the, uh, the uh, Pluto-Uranus conjunction, it's just like, oh, it's time to, time to mm -hmm. step up and, and kind of bring in new, you know, I mean, that's part of the reason why I do what I do is because it's like to help kind of help people kind of unlock and let go of the illusion of the old way of looking at it, you know, this limited kind of, you know, earthly locked into the earthly limits. It's like, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of truth to that, but there's a lot of truth beyond that too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, New it's going to be interesting to see this yeah. next year. When is the Uranus uh, Jupiter is like the April you said? Uh, April 21st. Yeah. At 21 degrees. Yeah. So 21, 21. Yeah. And then again, that energy is going to carry forward until the next time they meet up is going to be in cancer. So go every yeah, other. that's uh, that's That'd not assume that we're gonna make that. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, exactly. Who knows? Yeah. In theory, the next one is in Cancer, but the current one is yeah. in Taurus. And I think so much well, about because it. it's like Uranus is kind of like softened everyone up, so it's kind of opened up the Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, so Thankfully. everything, and, and it's just like okay. <laughs> Yeah. The opening act. <laughs> now, now Pluto comes mm -hmm. in and kind of like what's really, you know, what what is really important, you know, back to that Taurian energy. It's yeah. like what 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 is calming, what really is important. Yeah. You know, what really matters. Mm -hmm. Um, what you know. Yeah. And, and, and that Jupiter kind of wanting us to like reach beyond what we think is possible. Huh? Agreed. Yeah. 
new levels of, you know, calmness. And I, again, I think it really needs to be, well, of value also to, to what's outside of just ourself, even though Taurus is such a personal sign that Jupiter and Uranus aren't right. Jupiter social and Uranus is the, the transpersonal that whatever we have, it's like, we have something of value intrinsically that needs to be brought up because we need it right now. Like you were saying, like getting that call, right? It's time, bring your resources, bring those talents that you came in with time to, to make yeah, them. Yeah, but is, is, it, is it being of value or having people realize you're valuable? I think it's a big difference there. If you, if you like, Ooh, listen can you elaborate subtle. on that? Can you elaborate on that? I think that's you're on to something. Well, to be of value, it means that I'm like out there trying to be of value versus if I'm just me and people oh, value see. me. Because to me, that's where we're supposed to go. It's like we're supposed to just like, because one of the things that it's like, Because so so there's like oh and you're you're of this generation the Neptune and Sag generation because mm. to me it's like if it's not directly coming from the divine into your ears it's polluted mm. period so it's either coming from the divine into your ears or it's validating what's coming from the divine into your ears otherwise it's bullshit period you know and so and so if the old way of being was like hey let me let me bring something of value versus in my opinion a new way it's like here i am and let you know it's kind of like uh does the does the flower seek the bee or does the bee seek the flower <laughs> Right. And and to me, it's like in the past, it's been the flower seeking the bee, and I think it's really supposed to be the the bee seeking the flower. It's like here I am. Mm -hmm. Do you value? Are you finding this a value? Yeah. Come on in. Otherwise, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so Taurus too, right? The Venus. <laughs> Venus brings it in. Well, would, the, the other I, thing about Venus and Taurus is it is just it is kind of the the gatekeeper. Yes, yeah. no, you know. Yeah. And because uh, part of me is like looking at this. It's like if you think about how powerful Venus is in 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 this dance right now with being the ruler of the South Node ruling to uranus which is ruling pluto mm -hmm. you know um and then that dance of the venus and mars in the beginning and venus is really kind of like yes i like this or go <laughs> you know mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. back to that question i asked you before we started recording you know it's like uh are are you a queen Mm. you know yeah are you the queen of your you know and all those anyone with leo north node is like stepping into you know being being that queen of your universe you know and and, and letting go of what you were told that means to allow yourself to define what that means you know mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? and, and then, you know, because it's like, it's like, does the castle protect the queen or does the castle protect everyone else? Because traditionally thinking the castle protects the queen, but I'd like to go a little Uranian and say, no, the castle protects everyone else. Because mm -hmm. if you come to the queen with something stupid, you lose your head. And so it's like you don't come into the castle. Agreed. It's not so much to protect the castle, it's to protect or the queen is to protect you. Yes. And that would that was what I yeah, what I wanted to add in there was, but 
you know, the queen's not going to stay the queen very long if she's cruel to her people or not giving back or not protecting the people, not being in that way. Um, yeah, but hold on. Generous. Step back. See, I want to go back mm -hmm. to Uranus and Taurus. Okay. The queen's people mm -hmm. would never, and it's like, to, to, to be the queen's people excludes you from thinking the queen is cruel to you. Okay, I see what you're this saying. This is this is the this is the seeking the bee or being the flower. Sure. If you're trying to not be cruel to your people, you're not connected into because here's the way I look at it. Mm. Going biblical. Okay. God gives us free will. And God gives us free will because good is the absence of force. And so it's like the minute you don't, the minute you're like trying to do something or whatever for anyone else, you're, you're, you're not flowing in the freedom of, you know, and so it's like the minute you aren't just taking the divine and just shining it regardless of everyone else, and, and let the people who see it as value come to you. Because the minute you're like looking for, then you're then you're polluting it. Then it's not this pure because it's like, for, I'm just the queen. This is me. It's like, if you think I'm being cruel, then don't come in the castle. <laughs> you know, I, I can't, I have to focus on just channeling the purity of it, you know. See, and that's that's to me the higher octave of this Uranus, um, Jupiter, and Taurus, kind of opening us up to Pluto and Aquarius, getting us ready, setting the stage. You know. Interesting. Well, they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna kind of do a dance at the same time, since we'll have the. Again, that kind of background frequencies stage being set with the Jupiter Uranus for 14 years. And then Pluto, what have we got? About 19-ish more years. Yeah. They're going to overlap quite a bit in their um, their invitation to what we can pull from them or not. Yeah, Totally. So, any uh, any closing thoughts or uh, us uh, Gemini, Mercury, and Cancer, Mercury probably could talk forever. So. <laughs> probably, yeah. um, I think this was great. I really enjoyed having this deep dive discussion on other octaves of what's going on and where yeah, things yeah. are happening and where we can possibly go and take this that's outside of where we've been. So thank you. Likewise, likewise. All right. Well, thank you all for watching and have a spectacular <laughs> Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. <laughs>